Welcome to Finding Profits in Stock Pairs. This presentation is about how we're going to help you execute an easy to learn stock trading strategy that's been shown over to be consistently profitable for more than 40 years. And it's one that allows you to profit regardless of market direction and regardless of whether the markets are uh, in a frenzy and have increasing volatility. Importantly, this strategy uses hedged positions and these will protect you in the event of a market crash and help you avoid any kind of catastrophic drawdown in your account, which is the bane of so many new traders. It's a strategy which rigorous academic research has demonstrated to have historically generated between 1% and 5% per month of market outperformance versus the, uh, the broader market indices, and that's on an unlevered basis. And the strategy is long short stock trading, otherwise known as pair trading. And if you're watching this video, it's because you are trialing or have already purchased our leading online pair trading platform, Pair Trade Finder Pro. So if you're now getting familiar with using the analytical power of PTF Pro, like the other thousands before you who have downloaded and used our software, and you're using it to build your own pair trading system, your next natural question will be, how do I find profitable pairs to trade? And you can relax a bit because we've done much of the heavy lifting for you. Our team has spent literally hundreds of hours on updating, this is after thousands of hours of building, the free turbo boost that we like to give you when you subscribe to PTF Pro. We're gonna give you a tool in your arsenal to help you achieve consistent profitability. So what's it all about? How would you like to have auto-loaded into your Pear Trade Finder Pro when you first free trial or when you first subscribe to it, a group of 30 United States equity pairs that have generated trading signals, and these are in backtest. In the last year, those trading signals have shown 80 closed trades, and of those 80, 98% were winners. The average winning trade delivered $728. The average losing trade lost $187, which gave an average reward risk of 3.9 times. And the total net profit, had you been trading these signals on $10,000 a leg, was $56,371 in those 12 months. And if you're interested in finding about, out about these pairs and what they can do for you, then please read on and listen on. So here are the top 30 U.S. equities pairs updated and revised. The back-tested results of this revision over the last 12 months up until the 7th of November 2019. First, a quick disclaimer, these equity pairs are provided for informational, educational purposes only. They're not personalized investment advice. Uh, you shouldn't assume that if you trade according to the signals generated by these pairs that it wouldn't result in losses. It's your money, your risk, uh, like everything else in trading, it all, the buck stops with you. So moving onwards. So what's new with these top 30? Many of you are our current subscribers or our old subscribers to Pear Trade Finder. And uh, you have probably seen the top 30 before. So what's new of these ones? Well, um, historically we've used a 2.0 entry stretch and a 0.0, .0 exit stretch in the top 30 as they are an educational tool and that generates the largest number of signals that still have a reasonable profitability, uh, possibility and profitability of reverting to mean. And what we've done in these ones is we've stretched that out a bit. And why have we done that? Well, we've made an interest stretch at 2.5 standard deviations. That gives fewer trades per year. So that's 80 in the last 12 months versus 115 using uh, the last uh, top 30 that had an interest stretch of 2.0. Each trade is further extended from the mean. That possibly means a higher probability of some reversion to the mean. So what we're trying to do here is get you to begin to um, instead of getting as many signals as possible for you to study and learn from, now you're trying to get you higher quality signals. So ones that have potentially a higher probability of reverting to mean, and there'll be fewer of them. So less trades, uh, higher probability, that's kind of what any trading system we like to hear. So uh, check, checking news on each trade is critical. Because you're getting these higher stretches, it could be a major move based on a fundamental value shifting event. Uh, or an earnings release, you must always check news to make sure that that is not the case. The exit stretch, instead of 0.0, .0 which is having it come all the way back to the mean, we've made it 0.8. So this can be plus or minus. So it can be plus or minus uh, 2.5 standard deviations for entry, or plus or minus 0.8 for exit. What does it mean? It means don't get greedy. Instead of trying to ride one of these trades at full 2.0 standard deviations and waiting for it to come back to the mean and touch the mean, 
we are suggesting you get out earlier after 1.7 standard deviations of movement. And uh, that could possibly lead to a higher probability of a successful exit. And if you wait for it to touch the mean, well, believe it or not, the market has a lot of participants. A lot of them are looking at things like this, and a lot of them are using a moving average of the mean. So if you're waiting for it to touch, there's a lot of people watching. You may not actually get that touch, and it may reverse on you. So 2.5 entry, 0 0.8 standard deviation exit. And the third new thing with respect to these top 30, interactive brokers have just uh, gotten rid of all commissions for U.S. resident accounts. So we used to have 25 basis points per trade uh, as a commission slippage estimate. We have removed the commissions element of that, and we just have uh, 10 basis points as a slippage estimate. So uh, just a quick thing on entry stretches. You're saying, well, you're playing around with the entry stretches. Why are you doing that? What should we be using? I think it's worthwhile here. Uh, we've got a Z-score calculator here. This is a normal curve distribution, probability distribution. And um, what we're doing here when we're pair trading is we're waiting for the ratio to move away from its mean. The mean would be the zero. And if it goes two standard deviations, it's this line here, or negative two. If it goes negative three, it's here. If it's negative four, it's all the way out over on the left. Now, where you see the arrow there is at negative 2.5. What does that mean exactly? Well, if you see, uh, we've put into this calculator negative 2.5, the percentile probability is 0 0.62% uh, that it's going to hit negative 2.5 standard deviations or wider. Uh, it would also be 0.62% probability of hitting plus 2.5 standard deviations or wider, which means that at any given time um, in the history of, of the pair versus its moving average, only 1.2% of the time is it two and a half standard deviations or more away from its mean were it to be normally distributed? Okay, that's very important. Stocks don't always have a normal distribution, but that gives you an idea of the percentage of time that it would be at two and a half standard deviations plus or minus wide. And some people wait for three. Well, if you're waiting for three, it's about a 0.4% of the time is a, on a normal curve distribution is a pair as uh, ratio trading that far away from its mean. So those would almost always be events where there's been a fundamental value shifting move. So uh, keep that in mind. We want to we want to find a nice balance between enough signals that we're getting uh, enough uh, possibilities to put a capital to work and earn money. But at the same time, we don't want to get so many that a lot of them go wide and we end up hitting stop losses or uh, or are facing down. Uh, some pretty ugly open and losses in our position waiting for a reversion. Um, so that's just a very quick update on Z scores and entry stretches. We think this 2.5 is a very nice balance. So the up updated top 30 equities pairs, if you haven't heard this before, every one of these has to meet stringent return hurdles and pass a basic fundamental screening. We take our sample from, we use Yahoo Finance data, adjusted close price for all the back testing. And we take all our samples from uh, NICE, Amex, and NASDAQ. They have to have greater than $2 billion market cap. Most of them are greater than $3 billion market cap, so they're reasonable size. They all have greater than $2 million a day of average daily traded volume and easy to borrow. So there's liquidity there for any retail or small institutional trader, by small institution, I mean very small, uh, to be able to get in without moving the market or get out without moving the market. Similar fundamentals. They are in the same national market, same sector, often on the same stock exchange, usually in the same industry subgroup, although we do some cross industry subgroup pairs when, they're, uh, when they all have very similar fundamental factors affecting their performance. The preference is for beta similar, market cap similar pairs. That's not always possible, but we do look for it where we can. The back test was a three year back test. We used 2.5 entry, 0 0.8 exit, as we mentioned, and 10 basis points slippage per trade and again, because IIB has just removed commissions for all U.S. resident accounts, uh, we, we take a 60 days max days in trade. We use 100 day look backs, use $10,000 a leg as the example, and we don't apply an RSI filter. Then what do we look for in the backtesting targets? Well, we target a co-integration of greater than or equal to 0 0.90. Uh, for those of you who are au fait with how Pair Trade Finder works, if you're not, it's an augmented Dickie Fuller test. Uh, for co-integration. We flip it around because people like to see it that way. They find it easier to understand, uh, which means that instead of giving you the p-value, it's giving you one minus the p-value. 
So if, the, if you're looking for a p-value uh, when using the augmented Dickey-Fuller co-integration test of less than 0 0.10 to demonstrate co-integration, in Petrit Vendor Pro that means 0 0.90 or greater. Uh, we use 0 0.88 as a as being within tolerance. Okay, average net profit of trade at least 300, usually over 500. Um, when we are using wider entry stretches, we're not getting as many uh, trades per year as you can see, 80 versus 115, um, which means using a competent annual growth rate can be deceptive because if you only have one trade and it generates 500 bucks, uh, the way Petrofinder Pro measures the competent annual growth rate, it's only going to give you 500 bucks of profit for an entire year of having that capital available for use. Um, you know, we don't really trade that way. We obviously have more than 30 pairs in our in our watch list. We might have 300 pairs. So we have lots of pairs to choose from at any time. Capital tends to be uh, continually deployed with a little bit of margin, a uh, little bit of cushion. And um, and what really matters is the average net profit per trade and that the compound annual growth rate is in excess of the max drawdown. So we don't want to see a pair that draws down a lot because that's a loss that you in the in the past that you could have taken. Um, you know, we look to try and keep max drawdown below 10% or at least 15% in a, in certain very volatile pairs. It might be 20%, but the compound annual growth rate will be much higher to compensate for that. And you would probably position size downward on those. We look for a minimum win rate of at least 75%, target of 80%, and a target correlation of greater than 50%. We have tolerance for lower correlation, uh, correlation if the pair is highly co-integrated and uh, commission slippage, obviously less than 20% of gross profit. We want to maximize our take versus the broker take. And that's a lot easier now that uh, IB has dropped commissions to zero. So let's take an example of one of the ones that are in the new top 30. This is Hilton Grand Vacations versus MGM Resorts International. And uh, what you can see here is over the last three years, there were six trades. Uh, usually when we're using 2.0 and 0.0, .0 it might have been nine or 12 trades. Now we only have six. The co-integration was 0.94, correlation was 68 point, or yeah, 68.82, so you know it's well correlated as well. It is co-integrated. Compound annual growth rate, even only on six trades, was 15%, 100% winners, maximum drawdown of 5.32, so that's a three to one reward to risk. Average net profit on a trade was 873, the median 868, so uh, very consistently hitting those numbers. And 100% winners, the average days in trade was only 14.8. So quick trades delivering over 800 bucks each. There were six of them over the last three years and all of them were winners. You can see the um, equity curve on the bottom left chart, uh, beautifully sloping curve up, up uh, from bottom left to top right. Uh, no major drawdowns and six trades giving great profitability. You can look at the ratio chart on the bottom right and you can see that uh, if you draw a line of best fit through that, you're getting um, a lot of zero crossings and that the ratio hasn't changed much over those three years. It was trending a bit in the beginning. That's why you didn't see many trades for the first uh, six, nine months of this period. And then it started to really, really uh, kick off and deliver a lot of profitability. So great trade. Let's quickly take a look at the pair charts for this pair HGV MGM. And this is over the last year. And uh, we've put some arrows on the charts here. Let's just take a look through the, the last trade that this pair delivered. Um, you'll see on the top left chart and the bottom left chart, we've got red arrows pointing to an E for an entry. And what we like to see here is, okay, there was a big movement away from the ratio, uh, well extended down. And uh, if you look on the RSI chart, Sorry, on the ratio chart on the uh, top left, you see that that's a lower low of the ratio. But on the RSI chart, it's a uh, higher low. So that's a divergence. And that would suggest that there's a good chance. That suggests to us that there is a better chance, better probability that that may turn around and revert to mean. So it's one of the things we look for in our trading plan. So that's a very positive setup in that sense. Then we go over to the uh, plus minus charts and the RSI charts. And we can see that it is sitting on support on the plus minus chart it gets there uh, a few times over the last year but has always turned around and um, if we look at the uh, plus minus chart it's actually uh, at the low for the year we would want to take that further back maybe two three years and see if there is some uh, some support there either way it's a long way away from a big high percentage from the mean so uh, it's quite an extreme reading 
um, we could say that that in, its, in itself means that there is a greater probability that these two, two companies being fundamentally correlated should revert to mean uh, in the ratio of the prices between them. So that, uh, that trade, as you can see over on the left-hand side in the trade history window, um, was negative for most of the time and then very quickly it it uh, turned around a bit and then bam jumped back up all the way to the mean and delivered a very very healthy profit there well over a thousand dollars so um a very nice trade had you taken it so to summarize so the new top 30 is is all three year look backs entry stretch of 2.5 exit stretch of 0 0.8 there are 60 tickers there's zero duplication of tickers there are 20 industry subsectors so you have good diversification across subjects uh, uh sub sectors and all our new pairs so uh it, you know, forgive us if there's one in there that might have been on another set of top 30, but all our new pairs, as far as we're aware, some are high volatility pairs. So always make sure that you check volatility and position size accordingly. Um, I don't think there's anything over the, over about 3.5% uh, in the current set at the current time. And then as always, um, please don't trade raw signals. Always check the news to filter out signals deriving from fundamental value shifting events and avoid earnings releases and dividend dates. Now, let's just quickly go through the summary results. So the back test was 1st of November 2018 to the 7th of November 2019. There was 10,000 a leg, 80 trades. Average days in trade, 24. The median days in trade was 20. Average profit a trade of 705. Median, 665. 78 wins, two losses, 98% were winners, 39 times win-loss ratio, uh, biggest win 1,700, biggest loss 327, and then average reward risk 3.9 times. Interestingly, they delivered 56,371 in profit. If you impute the average margin for those trades, for the duration of those trades, on closed trades only, um, you would have required $37,000 or $36,864 of margin to have maintained those closed trades open. So the implied annual return on that margin was 150%, which comes out to about 7.9% uh, per month. Now, obviously, you already, always would have had, had to have other trades open at the same time. So you might have needed 50% um, or even 100% more margin than that. But on the margin that was required for those closed trades, these things delivered 7.9% per month. So that's the top 30, everyone. Uh, forced to show you this disclaimer. Please read it and understand it. And uh, uh, we hope that you've enjoyed this. And we hope that you, you use these pairs to generate signals to study and further your understanding of pair trading. Happy trading, everyone.